oh, it comes and then it dies and you pull the little dead part out of it and then it right. pulls it in. And then there's these little bitty pods that come in. Mm -hmm. There are these little bitty things. And so those oh, things okay. have, have seeds in them. And, and sometimes they'll burst before you can harvest them. Like sometimes okay. it'll in the midst of it and you'll see all these little black. I know. I noticed those little black yes. things. Yeah. Specks. Okay. Yeah. Um, those are the seeds. Okay. So, I'll look into it. Not yeah. me. I'll have my mother look into it. I don't have time for that. That's her thing. <laughs> but I'll ask her. She probably already knows, but um, I will ask her about that. She was shocked when. I'm gonna tell you, most people don't let their kale sit over over the winter time and come back. It's like usually we're harvesting it at the end of the season, so you don't even know that it it has that ability. Yeah, we left the stock on the kale. She has two raised gardens, and then the rest of them is like a twelve or fourteen pot potting mm -hmm. garden and um so she grew some kale in the back with tomatoes, which we won't do that again because it covered up my kale. I'm the one that eats the kale. I like it. Um, I like making kale chips. And um, and then the collard greens, she put some in a pot. So the pot one came back or, you know, grew out. And then she had some in the raised bed. And they both grew out um, pretty, pretty big. Um, so I'm excited. I, I can't wait. So I picked some today, this morning before, after I came back from the gym. I love kale chips too. Um... Yeah, I do. So I'm glad. I'm glad that's. Uh, I'm glad. So you know, my tomato plants used to be like that. Um, I would just get because I would let some tomatoes just drop to the ground. Mm -hmm. and then over the winter time, that you turn around and you see all of these tomatoes coming up, and yeah. But then I sometimes I didn't always thin them out good enough for them to really grow so this time around i'm doing a different kind of um different kind of garden so i got one raised bed i'm letting my tomato patch i'm going i think i'm going to get rid of the tomato patch and do it differently okay uh, mm -hmm. so we'll see we'll yeah see. that's fun it's good like morning erica good morning she says how do you make uh them chips <laughs> <laughs> well, I make mine it's really simple. I clean the kale, I wash it off, I let it dry, and then I massage each leaf with coconut oil, and then lay it in the um in a cookie sheet, and then I sprinkle um sea salt on it, and then I put it in the oven at 350 until it's crispy. You know, I was um I used to do mines kind of like that, but I didn't rub them individually. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I think I just used to spray um, some cooking spray on there. Yeah, that would probably be yeah. faster. Um. <laughs> I was, oh, did I spray anything on there? I think I did. And then, um, yeah, and just let them crisp up in the oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. It's easy and they are so yummy. You can eat a whole bushel by yourself in about half an hour i could eat a whole i, I always eat. I, they never make it off of the stove i know right <laughs> okay good i feel better i feel so much better yes <laughs> never yes i know i have a nice little airtight container i never feel it never have left the kale in there yeah. overnight i just eat it as it comes out yeah. it's so good yeah yeah yeah, me too so erica, <laughs> erica wanted to tell me don't rub it you massage it <laughs> okay <laughs> okay well look erica welcome back dear <laughs> we kind of miss your orgasm up on here <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh my goodness so funny yeah so <laughs> You know, I mean, and there is so, you know, there's so many wonderful things about um, this, this morning, I'm gonna tell you what I did this morning. It's so weird. Um, this morning when I went outside, it was, sometimes I get confused about my mornings. 
you know, because I, I, I like think like, was that this morning or was it mm. yesterday morning? You know, but this morning when I went out, um, it, it, it had drizzled overnight, but it, at this point it yeah. stopped. And so was that this morning? I think it was this morning because I think the garbage can was out. Um, and, and so I opened up the garage. I go in the garage and I get, you know, I got this thing about using this fertilizer, but I get the fertilizer out because the grass is damp and I'm always trying to remember to put the fertilizer on when the grass is damp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I took off my shoes and I backed through the grass, spreading this fertilizer. And then here I am running up the um, driveway with my, with my feet, you know, on the, on the, on the pavement too. But I had my, I was thinking about you. I had my grass, my feet in the grass. Yes. Morning. <laughs> morning. That's so, what I did this morning when I was cutting those kale chips with my bare feet. I, yeah. yeah. It just feels good. And then yeah. now that you know, or is it, is there a little saying or something about there's an angel assigned to every blade of, blade grass. of grass, you yeah. know? Yeah. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually i got that quote out of um julia cameron's book okay and um and she attributed to somebody else so ever on in on her pages she'll put like a quote in the margin and i just think i love reading those little quotes so mm -hmm. yay, yay, yay. so what a wonderful wonderful day i yes. am yes happy so yes, Tuesday, today is my yoga day. I am nice. so glad to be alive. I had a amazing massage yesterday. I went did you go in, back to the same place? I did. And I went okay. in and I told the woman, um, um, Dr. Carpenter, I was like, I said, look, I said, I hurt for a couple of days after that massage. I know it was a good massage, but I was like, I don't know if I need to do deep tissue every time. Sometimes I just want to come out of here feeling good. <laughs> So, um, so that's what we did. I took my magnet in and I had her finish off my massage with the magnet. Okay. You know, there is a, there is a part of me that just wants to do like love. I love to doing this healing work, you know, mm -hmm. it is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and even when it's being done to me, I didn't, I didn't care if she understood the magnet piece of it. <laughs> just, I can't get back there to do it. So can you just kind of, you know, mm -hmm. cause my, my, my lymphatic system to move in a direction, you know? So, um, so she was willing to do it and, um, it was good. It was good. Nice. Was good, good. Nice. So, nice. yes. Um, anyway, um, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about, um, Erica's birthday is coming up this weekend. The 8th or the ninth. I think it is. I think she said Saturday is the 8th. The 8th. Okay. Yeah. So. I have to write that down. So yeah, we can't, even though you know, <laughs> you know, had that birthday gift she looking for, but we could uh, be like, yay! <laughs> What's she looking for? A fancy car and a big house? No, <laughs> she 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 ain't looking for no fancy car, no big house. Although that might be nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, she was she was uh, trying to get a hookup for the uh, for, for the, the birthday. You yes. got glasses on top of your head. She, oh, do I? Okay. These are my other little glasses. Thank you. You're welcome. She was, she was, uh, she was um, telling Rhonda and them this morning about uh, her, her, her birthday uh, treasure hunt. <laughs> yeah, she, she likes saying, you can say it. <laughs> to say erica <laughs> advertising for erica to get a hookup on <laughs> oh. all right so um oh so juicy so good 
Mm. You want to pray or you want me to pray? I can pray. Then I can pray? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so juicy, so good. Mm, thank you, thank you, thank you. So as we turn our attention, knowing that there is only God, in all, through all, as all, in this very moment, We just breathe in knowing that this life, our life is one with the life that is God's. Everything that we have judged to be wrong or amiss, we now let those go and ask for clarity of vision. We thank you for this moment as we come into this space knowing that the words spoken here are filled with your light, love, and wisdom to the highest. We make room to hear what it is you would have us to hear, to say what you would have us to say, to do what you would have us to do, being the people that you would have us to be. We thank you and we bless this moment. Mm, we bless this day. Mm. And so it is. So it is. Amen, amen, amen. Yay. <laughs> Hi. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay. So, oh man, and Shay, thank you, Erica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so welcome and greetings, everybody. We are here. And I think this is almost like day, I'm going to tell you day, I'm going to do one of Rhonda's numbers. It's like oh. 30. <laughs> <laughs> Of, of the of the of the um of the morning glory morning glory Not okay apparently the other um the lint. lint stuff yeah we were doing but day 30 of this and um i'm just excited about this because now we're getting into um these seven sacred truths and uh we are going to just kind of um just drill down on this level one and um, and I showed you the picture yesterday. We are talking about the rectal area. The it's like the um, pine, the, uh, what is that? The that space between your anus and the vagina. That area right there, right? Is the perineal. Um. Well, the perineal muscle area. So I don't know about the exact scene location. Yeah. I'll say it like that. I think that that it goes. Um, do it's like I the center see? point of us <laughs> if we were upside down and pointed. <laughs> <laughs> It's the perineal gland. It's that so, space between the space. So, um, okay. Okay. I won't argue with that. I, I got nothing on <laughs> I know that they always say that it is at the base of the spine, but I think that people are always trying to be, um, uh, do I want to say polite? um or yes polite or they don't want to say that it's the place where we um you know I wonder if this is connected to so if I'm saying that the second chakra is part of your sex organs and the first chakra resonates to your um the exit the the other one <laughs> your your anal area, the second one to your, I'm wondering if the navel would be that third chakra, then the heart center, the fourth, then the throat, the, it, like it, like almost like it has, um, it's a power center because they are power centers. There's power center. And, and so each of those, um, okay, so, so wait a minute. So Erica going to say, I got the audio book and it's Carolyn Mass, not Miss. And I would say that the way that she, I've heard it also pronounced is Mace and not Mass. Um, and so I, and, and these are on the 
um, on some of her video works that I have heard it pronounced mace, M-A-C-E, and not M-A-S-S. -S. Erica, just such a, a, a stickler for stuff. I always say miss so that, I, and I spell it M-Y-S-S -S so people can find it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> she be <tripping>. me. <laughs> oh me. It's all good. <laughs> I had a grandma book. Okay. So so I'm always saying that um that it is this you know when when i see oh you know what um uh what's her face uh i don't mean to call her what's her face the wonderful karen andrea hale is um hey gretchen good morning good morning um karen andrea hale is starting to do a kundalini yoga class and um, I'm just wondering how that's going to go. Well, where are you going? Now she's talking about I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> Take that then, huh? <laughs> Whatever. Um, it's all done in love. Don't be taking it personal. No, look, look, you will be on me. Girl, <laughs> quit tripping. Um, so so um so she's doing a kundalini class and i just wonder how that um how that's working and maybe i'll inquire as to how that works she's doing it here for her. um i don't know if she's doing it she's from she's here in cleveland oh okay um but i'm not sure if she's doing it online or where okay. she's doing it at um I but not like yoga online really Mm -hmm. well, well i mean i haven't had a great success so I, I i feel better in person but you know i need right. to pick that because i want to do yoga in between my yoga days uh -huh. um i do my own sunday sal well sun salutation mm -hmm. i can do that straight through but then taking it to something else i'm eh, anyway i would love okay. to be able to do it by well, myself straight well, through you know, and and it's interesting though because um, I have a friend that I graduated high school. We went all through school together. As a matter of fact, uh, Pam Brackett, and she's a wonderful yoga teacher. And um, and my first one was Benita. Uh, that was my first ever really like con yoga teacher that I was going to on a regular. Okay. Um, but and and so Benita while she is very descriptive you know vanita can describe uh, a yeah. process down to a t i mean she is yeah. amazingly descriptive with it um pam will walk over and say can i touch you right there on your body and you'd be like oh i thought it was bad in the first place <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. yeah my yeah my yoga instructor is like that too um yeah. she'll reach over and be like yeah. oh okay uh -huh. right. yeah uh -huh. yeah so, um so yeah so i don't mind it online but some you know it's rare that um they asked us to do a pigeon the other day and i was like i don't know how to do a pigeon i've never done a pigeon how do you do a pigeon i don't know um but there is also a a girl that is on youtube that's amazingly good too um and so um yeah but but just you know okay anyway let's get let's get down to to this so we're talking about the first chakra which i am identifying as the the recto area which is um and stephanie says it's in between um perineal. the mm -hmm. perineal <laughs> anyway it's all down in that particular region and when you're doing kundalini you are rocking um and a lot of that rocking motion gets is what starts off the flow of that 
that energy. So the root chakra is, is that chakra. The first one is what connects us. It's like, it is that essence of the physicality of our being. Um, and it is that connected. It also resonates to um, Shekinah. There you go. <laughs> and the, it's, it's called the tribal chakra. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the note of the key of C. The note of the key of C. Okay. And, and what does C sound like? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, somehow something inside of me knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but yes, so... So all of that. And so what this chakra signifies is um, the overall concept that all is one. And I like to say it that there's only really one of us here. So there is this divine connectedness of all of life. Yes. <sighs> and most people, most people can't really get there because um, if you're busy judging everything and everybody, you can't see that you are one with everything and everybody. And so you basically would reject that notion. But if you really think about um, this in the sense that um, if you go all the way back to the origin story, all of us comes from this one source that is God. Yeah. And so um, however you want to, you know, to, to see it and to think, oh, I'm, but I'm on this particular leg on this particular, but the, all of it is just one. Yeah. And, and, and it kind of, as I, have been meditating and 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 just being in myself about this we are all one and um the family and i i think about how we have done ourselves a disservice across the globe when we have like put man above woman which means that man is denying himself a part of himself too so you walk in with one leg and you think you do it, you know, you think you're walking straight, but you really are walking with one leg anytime you deny the other half of it. Go ahead, my light fell. Uh, anytime you deny the other half of yourself, um, you are you are walking in a deficit, which which makes um disease makes so much sense to me that disease can come and come so rampant in our midst because we are denying it's just like all suddenly huh <laughs> i don't know what caused that doggone thing to fall legs out um well so i actually have it and, and it could be what caused it to fall is sitting on top of the speaker and um oh. <laughs> And so it could be the vibration from the speaker oh. caused it to um, vibrate right on off of there. I don't know. Um, so, so yeah, so, so in there, one of the things that it says is that we are interconnected with all of life, right? And if we are interconnected with all of life, that goes beyond just, so we can talk about it, just the human, human life, or we can look at it like life period. Yes. We are connected with all of life. So the, the secret life of plants, we are connected with trees, we are connected to whatever is living and creeping upon this earth, there is, I, I often tell people that when I look at either images or pictures or when I've seen animals up close and, and in person, I often look at their nostrils. I mean, if you can, if you can just picture the nostrils of a, a gorilla, and you see that thing breathing, you know that it is breathing and doing the same processes 
that you and I do. Yep. That life is, I mean, this is, there is a connectedness between all things and the tendency for us to um, think that we are going to somehow subdue life or separate ourselves off from it um, doesn't allow us the ability to honor that the same indwelling spirit, that divine spark that is in us is also in them. And just because you cannot or don't think that you have the ability to communicate or question whether or not they are sentient or thinking, it does not negate the fact that that too is life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I remember that um, when I was, when we were younger and in school, they had this idea or this definition about life that uh, something that is alive has the ability to reproduce itself. It, it, it has activity or motion and then the ability to reproduce itself. I'm not uh, um, sure that how many more other um, points there was in that, but that was really the, like how they would say life was and mm -hmm. what it was. And so if it has the ability to reproduce itself, that means produce a seed, then that is life. Right. Um, and so this is about understanding that we are interconnected with all of life and each of us must learn how to honor that truth. Um, and so I remember when I really, you know, there, there's a part of me that knew this from the time I was a kid. I would look at bugs and I would just be so aware and fascinated with them. So, um, you know, even though I recognized that a worm was alive, it was something fascinating about the fact that it would still be wiggling, even if I cut it into little pieces, mm -hmm. you know, um, I never really had um yeah I did it's like when you're especially when you're a kid and you see an animal being slaughtered or killed for your consumption there is something in you that that cries out for that because there is something in you that knows that that's a violation and it doesn't have to be something that you read in the bible or you saw someplace else it's like an inherent feeling that, mm -hmm. that you feel with, especially as children, that you feel with a particular thing or a particular person. And we learn not to. But we come in this world knowing that we are connected. Um, and so part of this, when they, when they talk about learning this truth that all are one, um, yeah, that, that that is part of it. So, um, and so we, we also learn that in the midst of this is that we learn how to honor our, the family to which we were born. Divinely chosen. Hmm. Yes. And here's the funny thing. <laughs> A lot of what? times we want to critique and criticize our families and make it seem as if we don't know that we are totally connected to them and come from them. Well, we better uh, recognize. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 um, and until we can accept that. So, so like, say for instance, this is, this is, <laughs> I remember, I remember one time my, yeah, I, you know, my mama used to whip my butt, right? I'll just say it like that. My mama would, used to tear my ass up. <laughs> And I remember telling her one time, because I'm such a smart aleck kid. I was a, such a smart aleck kid. I told her, I was like, I didn't ask to be here. You and dad just decided. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> okay. Who was that? There was somebody that just got a, had one of, was that the Oscars or the um, something the other day? The, you know, I don't watch TV. Yeah. 
I think it was the Oscars the other day and um, one of the guys, I can't even think of who it was, um, it was giving thanks for his Oscar and he was like, he says, my parents had sex. He says, and wham, I'm here. <laughs> right? And it's just <laughs> like that. Come on. Oh my gosh. I think it was the guy who um who was in um in the Black Panther movie. Okay. Uh, but it's so true. And yeah. it's just like that. Yes. And, and, yes. Yeah. And it's yes. it's an intention. Her, his sister just dropped her head like, oh my God. <laughs> like he just do that. <laughs> yeah, like this fool. He was like, my parents just had sex and bam, you got me. <laughs> and um and that's so, good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Because <laughs> I mean, because you know, there is this such this disconnect that we do for some odd reason. I don't know either. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, there have been, and 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 here's here's part of this truth telling, right? Is is there there is has been a concerted effort to disconnect man from what is natural, from itself. Um, yeah, right, right. So, but but from the earth, you know, oh, yeah. we make it seem as if the earth is 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 somehow evil and dirty of, mm -hmm. of, of care and love and and good stewardship right yes. um so we we have this you know this blame that goes on between like woman was what corrupted man and and you know and yeah. this you know this all this crazy stuff and people actually never question the 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 junk that we learn, we just keep perpetuating the same, the same thing without thing. asking the questions. Yes. Not on my watch. Yeah. <laughs> That's my song today. Yes. Not okay. on my watch. Not on your watch. There Not you on go. my watch. There All I can go. do is speak for me and mine. And right. you get blessed in, in the interim, but not on my watch. I just can't, I can't, I can't, you know, like once you learn about sugar, you just can't keep eating it. When you understand even right. how it's how it's created and right. how it's manufactured, and you can't keep it's like I just I can't, you know. After a while, you just stop and be like, "Yeah, let me let me help you understand what I didn't understand." Um, uh -huh. Like yeah. not on my watch, not not on my watch. Whatever I can do, but not on my watch. Right, I can't right. perpetuate that. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, Willie. Yeah. Good morning. You know, it, it is it is amazing to me that. You know, I was listening to, I, I don't even know what the guy's name was, it's some rabbi. And, um, and you know, sometimes the, the Jewish tradition is so rich in how they sit with information, right? How they sit in a particular thing. And so one of the things that he was talking about was the creation story. Um, which, you know, in essence comes out of the Old Testament or the Torah, the original books of the Bible. And he says, you know, in, in sitting with that thing, he says um, he was learning about this, uh, the, you know, the, the serpent and this so-called apple. And he was like, and, uh, you know, what they know is, is that apples wasn't uh, uh, indigenous to the region, so it couldn't have possibly been an apple anyway. Um, and so, and this this thing that that woman gave me this thing to eat, and and this idea of knowledge happened. And so, so you know, there is this thing of first off, the 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 crap that we've been told would say to us that God didn't want man to have the knowledge. Right, like he was hold, keeping something from us. Right, like he wanted us to be continuously um, in the dark. Yes. That, and, and dependent. That in itself is just seems contrary to <laughs> how we were created, right? 
I used to, I used to ask the questions all the time. Would God, the God that I believed in, would God purposely be deceptive or a deceiver? Right. Would he actually want or put, give me the ability to think and then not want me to? Mm -hmm. So there is this, you know, so there's this question all the time of, of what, you know, that, that's kind of like, you know, um, with everything, like would, if this is natural to me, if it's a natural impulse, why then turn around and make it an evil impulse? Right. right? If, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, so I, I kind of get into the, the, the narrative we've been given versus what is evident, right? And so, so all of this becomes a question for me. Anyway, let me get to the point that I wanted to make so we can get back to the book. Anyway, in this, um, in this talk that this rabbi was doing, he was saying that, um, he was saying that in that story, there is the, you know, the woman and the man and all of that stuff. He says, but really what was interesting was, is that, that the snake for its effort was supposedly cursed. Hmm. And he says that the, the curses Ooh. put upon the snake was, is that you are going to crawl on your belly, right? Um, you are going to eat the dust of the earth. And I think it's something like you will be, I don't know if it's feared or that you will be something rejected by um, humans. I forget what it was, but it was three okay. things. Uh -huh. Three things. And so the rabbi sort of was questioning whether or not those were in fact curses. He was like, if you were to tell somebody that one, that they were going to crawl on their belly, he's like, okay. He says, if you told them that they would eat of the dust of the earth and you look at the, the, the earth and how big it is, he was like, you were telling something that you will never be hungry. Hmm. You will never be in want. He says, how would that be a curse? And so he was questioning whether the curse that it was supposedly put upon this serpent was really a curse at all. Right. Oh, and let me say uh -huh. that if the devil, the snake, let me say that, represents new thought, mm -hmm. then it is the indictment that is put upon people who think outside of the norm. So if you know, there's this, there's this, you know, for your Gandhis and your Christ Jesuses and um, the, uh, the people who think outside of the box, there is this so-called punishment, crucifixion. So, I mean, could be foretelling of that person too, because in the story of the serpent, you will not surely die. It's yeah. like this, let me share some truth with you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So wait a minute, where did you pull that new thought with the snare serpent from? I, I, from my head. Okay, That's, <laughs> that sounds like a worthy place. Because it did introduce this idea of, hey, you know, eat, this is good, this is good, eat. You know, what? what is that? <laughs> right? So, okay. Okay, so anyway, so all of this stuff that sometimes what, what we've been told is goes against what we naturally, what naturally. we naturally live, the truth that we yes. naturally live. Yes. And so good morning, Faith. Um, and so when we, when we, she, yeah, wow, you're up early, girl. Um, <laughs> so, so. So what we're doing is, is that, that all of this stuff becomes about re, a reclaiming by questioning the stuff that we've been taught or by questioning what we, 
that light is intended to come down. Okay, so I'm gonna put it. Can you hear my jumbling over here? Yep. So, so okay, so you're gonna have to sit right there like that. Okay. Okay, so whatever. Woo. All right, so uh, and get in front of this other light, my backlight. So, um, so it becomes this thing of us really trying to understand what it is that we've been taught, and then why? Why have we been then severed from this idea that we are one with all of life? Why have we? Why have we been put in this particular mindset, this psyche been totally told to us over and over again? And here, let me say this to you. You, I don't know if we are aware, if you are aware that there is, there was a, a, a Bible and then there was a slave Bible that, um, um, that were specifically meant for just Blacks or for people who had been enslaved. There right. have been apocryphal Bibles. There have been Bibles for a different segment of the population based right. on what they wanted you to yes. know or yes. learn. And so when you start to understand that this has been used as a tool for your suppression. For hurting Ah, oh, oppression, yes. <laughs> it has been used as a tool against you. So at some point, we have to back up and scratch our heads and say, hmm. Yeah, and that, that the intuition has to be like made clear. And um, one of the things I said off air, I think it was yesterday about what made me start to have questions is that I used to say, Pardon my arrogance, but I used to say, and, and, and Rob will attest to it, my kids probably too. I used to be like, God, don't nobody love you like I do. This uh, some, something is not right because I'm not feeling the love here. Mm -hmm. Some I'm missing some information. And that's what started me digging around and saying something about this is there's got to be something more because I know. Right. Based on the information that I have, I love the Lord. Like, oh, I love God. Like, like this little kid kind of love. And yet there were things that were not leveling up, weren't in alignment to what I was experiencing. And so that was like, I got to go in here and do more. So then I went to college and went to the theological seminary and just you know I was just like you know what guys I'm sorry I, I'm probably gonna get kicked out of the good old boys club but this stuff is not making sense to me and so my papers were scrutinized because I wanted to know more and more and more and more and and what people do is they tell you to lean not to your own, own understanding. understanding no yeah you I'm better thinking, what the hell you better you better lean to your an understanding that is greater than yours Right. Because if I lean to what I'm being taught, then I'm still leaning to my own understanding. So they want you to drink the Kool-Aid and not question what's in the Kool-Aid. And there's so, so much more to this journey than what we see. And, and you know what? And I, one of the things, um, and I think you said it, earlier is this you know when people are audacious enough to speak their truth you have the jesuses right you have the people who are not just following lock stock and barrel along the path that they are being led down but jesus was saying i didn't come here to break the law i came here to fulfill the law Mm -hmm. And so when you recognize that you are fulfilling this, the walk, right? When you, when you start walking in that power, like, okay, let me show you, let me show you how this works. Well, do you see the threat of telling a slave that they are God? Yes, I do. Or I that do. they have the power, that the power of their freedom is in their mind? Or, or even, even the, 
that so so yes that it's that it is is in your mind it's in your word yes and, and the, the amazing thing about it is is even though that they weren't being told this there were those among us that were still getting it that were yes. still walking. because it didn't have to come from a book it's not it's inside it's of not. you it's the the truth is in me yes 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 and so, and so what we do is, is that it causes this, um, you know, I remember in the matrix, I, I got to go back to the matrix in the matrix. There was this, um, there was this moment when they were going into this building and Neo said, uh, oh, deja vu. And they were like, everybody stops like what? And they was like, deja vu. Was it what you, what was it? exactly you saw a cat and then another cat was it exactly the same cat and he was like i don't know it could and and so he started questioning himself because they were asking that uh, to stop like deja vu that means something has been changed <laughs> <laughs> and so sometimes we are having those like moments where we uh you know something is not right we look and we think something is not right. And then what people try to do is they try to explain it away. They try to, what you saw is not what you thought you saw. Um, what, what, what you read is not what you thought you read. You got to get back in the box. You can't question mm -hmm. this. Even now, some, you know, there's somebody that's listening to us thinking to themselves like, Ooh, I'm so scared for them. Right. <laughs> right. But, 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 you know, but there's so much more like, you got to know there's so much more like things are changing every day. Like when I was growing up, there was rotary dial phones. Okay. Right. And right. now we got phones that are computer. Yeah. Yeah. That follows if if we in this manifestation are making all of these so-called advancements, then come on, surely all that is, is bigger than what he he she is just so much bigger like we have to live well, we don't have to do anything i am determined to live in a space of of greater expectancy because there's more to that more to this this space and we have been intentionally put here for expansion yes. right 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 Ele the chakras are elevating true going up right right okay so let's get let's get back because we uh yeah, yeah we're running out of time like um, so <laughs> all is fun um and we need to honor our family bonds because and, and it says here the tribal chakra resonates to our need to honor familiar bond familial bonds and to have a code of honor within oneself mm -hmm. within ourselves right and so honor was a word that I just kind of picked up out of there because I love, love, love the word honor. Mm -hmm. um, honor for me shows a certain reverence, a high esteem for a particular thing. Um, and so when we think about honor, we think about, um, and I don't even want to say our military, um, we, we have images of, of, of of honor that does not just include um the slaying or the taking of oaths or anything like that and honor is is to have reverence for a particular thing so honoring your family yes and those bonds but also honoring yourself mm -hmm. right and and i love how we because we pointed this out before that that our hearts do not originate um uh and our hearts does not originate in our dna but rather it's re rooted in divinity itself yes so when um when gene houston said the the term that you are the lensing point lens as in lens like a glass that means like a microscope you are the lensing point of god consciousness mm. here on earth mm. you are the 
apex of eternity in yes. time in this moment that yes. is you yes and that is power that yes. is and, and to sit in that space right to sit in that space is to have honor for your manifestation mm -hmm. for your incarnation into this space and so to recognize that this, that you are not here by accident, that it took literally hundreds of thousands of entities to get to the point where you are right, right. here, right now. Right. And right. this moment is a divine moment. Yes. Because if you didn't know it before, let me tell you, you, yes. can, you can hit rewind later, but I am telling you that right here, right now, Mm -hmm. you are on purpose yes it's a divine it. intention it's a divine intention it is this is a divine intention march 31st 1967 nine months prior to that yeah i was a divine intention a big bang happened right yes. it was like i'll go send me yes yeah yeah you yes. can let them too i'll i'll choose them wait let's do this yes <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that's literally how it happens. We are choosing the situation, the circumstances oh. into which we were born. Yes. This, this skin color of yours, this um, this this sex of yours, all of this stuff is here, and it comes with an intent. Yes. And this intent to be in this moment to understand yes. why it is you have the thoughts and the feelings you yes. not to curse it, not to curse it, but but rather to recognize that in the 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 friction of it all, in in the in the the things that all of it, ah, it is here for a amazingly wonderful purpose. Yes yes so you are at the intersectionality of all of that yes hey. and can you just imagine i'm always imagining a planet that understands that i'm imagining my great grandchildren my grandchildren now even um because i share this with my sons so that they can share it with their kids so that they can have a different experience because i'm committed to not on my watch people are building generational wealth and I, I guess i am too but there's something about me wanting my kids and grandkids to know who they are intrinsically right period from the beginning right. they, they didn't come here and then god sitting saying i wonder what i'm gonna do with her no there is a divine plan in place and if I can get my little ones to be on the search and the recognition of it and hey, look what I did this, this is this, this, this whatever, you know, I am, I am, I am. If you cook it today, seven, it's my granddaughter, you're a cook today. I am an amazing chef right now, right now she is. And, you know, I just, I, I think reminding us who we are from the beginning was one of the giant pieces that was missing on my journey. You know what's interesting that just just kind of like came to me we always make this about money and wealth mm -hmm. but wonder if we recognize that the real wealth is not the stuff that we print that we because because actually money is symbolic right yes. um we print it you i mean there are people who literally print it yeah so money is is just a symbol wonder if we recognize that the real wealth is not the money right the real wealth is awareness <laughs> it's, it's 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 us i mean it is this you know, in the matrix, there is that thing where, um, where they, where they pull out the battery and, and, um, and they just kind of do the, the, the thing about the copper tap. I used to have, keep a big old D cell battery right here in my drawer. And I don't know, I don't feel like digging for it at the moment. I know it's gotta be here somewhere, but, um, but, but really it was about the, you know the energy that i mean 
what we are is 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 is, is a force, a life yes. force, right? Yes. Yes. And so what we do is we exchange our life force. That that means our efforting, that the stuff we do, we exchange that for money. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. But the real time gift, for money, yeah. efforting for money. The real gift is not the money. Mm -hmm. It is what we have. What we have. And we just we sell off what it is that we are for that's the good. money. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we get confused about, because we'll sit there and say, well, if nobody wants the product of me, and that's because they've told you what products are sellable, right? If, if you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you what has worth and what has value, but most people don't just recognize that as they are, they have value, value. right? And so, so, so we go around chasing after dollars and money rather than cultivating what is natural in us. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's good. That's that good. is good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For a day or two. Yeah, that's good. Um, so, so um, let me, let me. Um, yeah, um, our time is winding down. So money or, oh. Girl, come on. Um, so, <laughs> so, so encounter, so we encounter the truth that um, all is one within our biological families. We relearn to respect the blood bond, right? Um, yes. And our family may teach us that we are part of one divine family. So sometimes people get this thing, um, you know, they get it a little twisted because they want to start talking about um, the Christian family or the Muslim yes. family, the Jewish family. But sometimes when we get caught up in that, we miss that all life is important. All yeah. life has value, yeah. all life worth meaning all of yes. that stuff it is yes. life itself um and so 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 we go from the nuclear family to a larger you know idea of a family and and we keep building uh upon that so it says um so your bond to your biological family is symbolic of your connection to everyone and all that is life as Tichnant Han says, we are, we enter our, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. enter our, meaning, um, yeah, enter our, <laughs> that's good, that's good. So violating this energy bond by, for instance, considering those who are different from us to be less than us creates a conflict within our spirit and therefore within our physical bodies. Now, so, 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 so if you, if you are, can you imagine if everybody knew that the judgments they place upon another had an impact on their soul. Right. You therefore continue to do it. Yeah. Um, this morning, while I was doing my meditation, I, I got to um, write this down. This morning, while I was doing my meditation, I was thinking about this thing of blessings. You know, um, you know how we say bless you to people. God bless you. God bless you. Wonder if we were looking at that actually as if it was a currency, right? Mm. Like a blessing is a currency, like a gift that we are giving to another. I'm giving you a blessing. That means that as I give to you, I'm taking from the source that I have and I'm actually gifting you with something. And, and the reason why this came to me is because um, I see this guy on the side of the highway all the time that has this sign where he's asking for food or for money or something like that, um, asking people to help. And then at the bottom, it says, God bless you. Mm -hmm. and um and and to me i you know mm. people as he's holding up that sign at i'm sitting there and i'm looking at this man and i'm thinking like you are already operating in a deficit right mm. 
So you don't really have any blessings to give. So you think, but okay. Yeah, because 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 in from from where the the vision that I got was is that you're trying to to give blessings that you don't have to give because you're already operating on a deficit because what you're doing is is you're using something to pull on the heartstrings of other people. And so therefore um, is not working to the advantage that you see yourself as working. Kind of like a cognitive dissonance because you're living in one space and then trying to get from another space, not understanding that you manifest this space. And so, so, so yeah, so if I was looking at it, like, remember how I, how I use that analogy of you got a hundred watts of energy coming in per day. So I wonder if you get every day, you get a hundred blessings, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, um, I, I get, I get a blessing. I give a blessing. I give a blessing. I give a blessing. I give a blessing. I only have a hundred, mm -hmm. right? But now I've given away 500, mm -hmm. which means that I'm pulling on blessings that I don't have yet. Mm. Now. I will say that what I know is for me, for me, because I am, I, I call myself being in the blessing business. I always think that I got blessings in reserve. Like, I feel like I got a stockpile, right? I got a stockpile because I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm doing work. I'm, I'm, I'm working it, which means that not only am I trying to create more, but also in my giving and my, in my sharing, it's like, I, I'm feeling like that I'm getting amplification. And so then there, I get, I got, mm -hmm. yeah, I got, I got stuff to pull from, but if you are already acting as if I'm going to give you something that I haven't gotten or i don't have to give that you don't have okay yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um in in the in the thought that i'm going to therefore get so so it becomes all of that for me it's like questioning um and trying to understand the way that did not, i'm not saying that that's how it works right I'm right still, right 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 i'm still praying around this um and praying for clarity around it but what I do know is, is that, um, you know, we have to be mindful of, of the motivation behind stuff. If I'm just saying, God bless you in order that you bless me, mm. is that my intent is wrong in the first place. <sighs> it's not coming with a pure intent. There's no honor in my intent. Or you're not, there's no overflow. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning all of that. Y'all, let me do that. That's good. That, but I mean, it's good to, I like, I like stirring things up. That's why I'm sitting in this chair in front of this camera right now, is because I like stirring it up because I've stirred it up by myself so long that it's just nice to be able to say, oh, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about this? Yeah. What do you oh, think about this? Like, how about maybe... Uh, <laughs> we yeah. can look at this from a different place, from a different angle, from a different yeah. perspective. Yeah, all of that, you know, and to know that that in the the excavation of it, in the I like that, the that's pursuit good pursuit of it, there is some wonderful blessings to be to mm -hmm. be gained and to be found and to to share. So. Um, so, so yeah, I love that. But, but the moment we consider, um, somebody less than, right, then it creates a conflict in our spirit, in our body. Yes. And so wonder if the ideas about our judgment of people and judgment of situations blocks our ability to know that all is one. And therefore, if we if we are then cutting ourselves off, we are not at the benefit of the energy exchange that ha happens naturally when we're all connected or when we know we're all connected and one. Yeah, I'm, I'm I just I'm I'm curious about that, and I'll I'll remain curious about that. Um, so accepting and acting and according to the basic truth that all is one is our challenge, right? It's our challenge. And one it's the, like, go, go ahead. ahead. 
No, good. and the thing is, is that if we don't master this part, I mean, just going back from, as a clinician, you know, people make fun, like, you know, what is your relationship like with your mother? Because it's it's true. If if I if I can get a client to exonerate their childhood experience, uh huh not having this conversation with them unless they are spiritual and then we do have the conversation they are now opening up that energy space once they release the shame the blame the victim stuff from their childhood and their family of origins and their moms that part of their region opens and now we can work on the next part and the next part and the next part so there there is a method to the madness right you right. know because exonerating where we come from is so essential because it right. connects the dots and puts us back in like Humpy Dumpy that fell off the wall. It's the part of putting us back together again. Right, right. And that's what we were talking about yesterday about why people that there's an arrested development. Yeah, I like in, that. And where you grow to when you can't accept something as basic as your family. Yeah, you are sitting in criticism or in judgment of your family. Now, you know, um, and and so we haven't even made it halfway through this section of level one. Oh, huge. <laughs> uh huh. But um, one of the things I wanted to talk about too is is that when, say, for instance, you are you were put up for adoption at birth, you mm -hmm. know. And, and to some degree, feel as though you were rejected by your Yes, parents. yes. Um, that too sets you up to have some mm. different issues that you then have to deal with. But one of the things that I talk about and we've talked about from day one of doing this work is the necessity of the forgiveness exercise. Yes. And the forgiveness exercises put you in a realm where you open your heart space up to possibly seeing or receiving a different level of, um, of revelation, mm -hmm. of re revealing to you some of these um, truths. So tomorrow we will pick up right here where we are leaving off. Um, I'm gonna put a mark there so that I'll know where we are, um, that we ended up in that, only in the second paragraph on <laughs> page 80. But we are, um, you know, this is a building process. It's not just one that's oh. one and done. Um, and so, you know, I am, you know, I would say to you, Stephanie would say to you, um, do the work, do, do the work. If the work is, um, you know, just wrestling with these issues and these ideas, even if they're just in your own mind. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. is this true? Is this, how does this feel? What do right. I and I'm going to say, just because I'm, I, I want to say, ask and get your own answers, just yeah. a guide. This is not, this because what your truth is may not be my truth. And people used to have a whole problem with relativity, but it's the truth. Right, right. It's what because that's what sets us free, and it makes all the beautiful flowers in the garden. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm gonna say that and yes. here. Right, <laughs> right. You know, I I think that um that is so true that the way that this falls on me, but but here here's the, the I guess the caveat that I'm going to put on that is is that. You know, we have got to be in a space where we are willing to question what we know, not recoil in fear because yes. of what we've been taught, yes. but even to ask the question about what we know. Mm -hmm. And I think that for each and every one of us, that carries with it its own blessing. Just yes. to say, you know, God, show me, mm -hmm. show me. Mm -hmm. and, and give me eyes to trust what I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so um, I thank you guys for being here. This has been wonderful for me. <laughs> and I trust it's been wonderful for you. It's I appreciate your attention and your time. 
and um and we will be here the same time tomorrow yes right? thank you thank you thank you thank you so have an amazing tuesday the light thank of god you. surrounds you the love of God infolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you wherever you are. All of God is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all is well. All is well. Amen. All right. Have an amazing day. Yes. Go in peace and just spread this, this sunshine. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Smile. Yeah, yeah, what a great day. All it right. It is. All right, thanks, Annie. Thank you. Bye-bye.